Slovak lands became a protectorate of the German Reich. Slovakia declared its independence, but remained a puppet and ally of Germany. In both countries, the Roma were treated harshly. Robert Tashir's father, Jura, was 15 years old when Slovakia became a stooge regime controlled by Germany. Later in life, he would tell his wife, Antonia, how his village simply disappeared one day. They were hiding in the forest because their house was shot to pieces. If they'd returned home, the guard would have shot them too. And during the war, her entire settlement of 250 or 300 people, they packed up and they disappeared into the bush. No, no water. No electricity. No provisions of any kind. They had dug dugouts in the ground where, where they lived. They lived off the mercy of, of surrounding Slovak peasants. The Hlinka guards wanted to annihilate the Roma population. They didn't like the decent, though modest conditions that the Roma had established here for themselves. So they pushed them out. Hiding in the forest, the Tashirs found food was hard to come by and cigarettes almost impossible. Yura's father became so desperate for a smoke, he ordered Yura and his older brother to sneak into town and buy him a pack. The tobacconist realized immediately that the two boys were gypsies and called the Hlinka guards. My father-in-law didn't have anything to smoke, so my husband and his brother went to get cigarettes. They were caught and put on a truck. My husband didn't have any shoes, so they wrapped straw around his feet. Yura and his brother were taken to a nearby town where an ancestral home had been transformed into a work camp. From dawn to dusk, the inmates labored, building a water cistern. They were not concentration camps in the sense of extermination camps. These were labor camps where able-bodied men were supposed to work on government projects. There were epidemics, and obviously people died of them. There was hunger. Definitely living in these, these labor camps was, 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 a, was, was a very hard experience. And it was not a picnic, and there was a lot of physical abuse as well. Robert Tashir's brother, Vladislav, remembers his father talking about his experience. They tortured him for three or four days. They beat him at that camp. And I know for a fact that they put him on a bench and beat him across the heels of his feet until they bled. Somehow they managed to escape. My husband was shot in the leg, and his older brother practically carried him on his back to his parents, still in the forest. They took care of him. Almost all of Jura Kotler's family survived the war. Although they became even more impoverished, the Roma of Slovakia were fortunate compared to their neighbors in the German-controlled Czech lands. There, 90% of the Roma population was exterminated. Slovakia was not directly ruled by, by Nazi Germany as, as Bohemia was. There were rules and regulations, but in Slovakia those regulations were not as quickly and not as effectively carried out as they were in Bohemia. And because the Nazi rulers were, were more and more distant and, and more removed. In August 1942, two work camps specifically for gypsies were established in the Czech protectorate at the towns of Hodin and Leti. The conditions were very inhumane. The men, women, and children were separated into different cabins in Lati, and later in separate barracks in Hodin. Regarding food rations, they were so extraordinarily low that the people suffered from severe malnutrition. The hygienic conditions were not any better. The barracks were infested with lice and bed bugs, so infectious diseases developed very quickly. The majority of people died of typhus.
Roberta Bereshkova is one of the few survivors of Lati. Hers was a nomadic Roma family. Her father was a woodsman, her grandfather a horse handler. At the end of 1942, the Czech police came to the Bohemian village where the family had gathered and told the Roma that they must work on farms for about half a year. They were ordered into their wagons and horses and set off for Lati. They took away our horses immediately, along with the gypsies who were standing there. Then they pulled the wagons towards the woods, disassembled them, took the wheels to transport other things and left the wagons behind. Men and women were required to do hard physical labor at Lati. Bits of bread, potato and cabbage were the only food. Clothes quickly disintegrated into rags. Illness went untreated. But what Berta Bereshkova remembers most vividly was what happened when someone broke the rules. If someone did something, no matter how minor of an infraction, he was put on a bench and the members of his family had to hold him down securely and beat him with clubs or branches until he was bruised from head to toe. The police watched, never getting involved, never beating him themselves. Many Czech Roma were transported by train through stations such as this, still in use today. From there, hundreds of Roma were held in depots such as this station in Brno, which stands today as a memorial. From here, they were transported to Auschwitz-Birkenau, where they were gassed. Berta Bereshkova was among the lucky few. As the war ended, she was kept behind at Leti to help dismantle the camp before the Allies arrived. Her mother, however, died at Auschwitz. Robert Tashir, like most other Czech Roma, knew nothing of the horrible fate of his fellow gypsies. I was never taught in history at school that the Roma population was tortured or executed during World War II. The focus was always on the non-Roma Czech population. Those who died during the war were in the underground, building barricades or fighting. There was no mention whatsoever of the Roma people and their losses during the war. Nothing about the concentration camps. Nothing. Eventually, a memorial was built near the Lati camp but the authorities also allowed a pig farm to operate on the site itself. I'm very saddened by the fact that the Czech government and public did not give the Roma their due recognition. I'm saddened that they did not demolish the pig farm and erect a small monument in recognition of the Roma legacy there. At the end of the war, the Czech Republic and Slovakia again became one country, Czechoslovakia. And in 1948, the communists came to power. The Roma were now to suffer a different kind of war, a crusade to wipe out their culture. Under the communists, the Roma were not considered a distinct ethnic minority in Czechoslovakia, as were the Germans and Poles. The Roma were to be assimilated into the population and their lives transformed. In 1958, a law was passed depriving gypsies of their nomadic lifestyle. The wheels were removed from their wagons and in some instances, their horses were shot. And there were attempts to control the gypsy population. 
Some Roma women were sterilized without their knowledge while they were giving birth in hospitals. So there's the government which is reconstructing society and reconstructing human beings. Everybody was forced into some kind of a straitjacket. In the case of the Roma, because they diverged so much more from mainstream society than everybody else, you know, that force was felt more. Yet many Roma now consider the four decades of communist rule as the golden period in their lives. The Roma under the communists had, for example, the right to work. It wouldn't have happened that if they approached an employer, that employer would be able to say, we don't want you. Under the communists, nobody would dare slander anybody or not let them into a restaurant. Now the Communist Party is telling them, well, we don't want you to be on the margins anymore. You know, we don't want you to be underground. You don't have to be scared of us anymore because now for the first time in history, you have a regime which likes you, which wants to help you. But they have to convince them. And the only way that the Communist Party could achieve this was by taking them off, or building houses for them, giving them jobs, giving them food coupons at the beginning. In the late 1940s and early 50s, thousands of Roma were persuaded to leave their villages in Slovakia and move to industrial centers in the Czech regions. Robert's father, Jura, was among these migrant workers. But even under the communists, which strictly forbade discrimination, finding a job was not easy for a gypsy with a grade one education. He thought he would get work here, but he had a lot of trouble. He went to the employment bureau, but the only work he could get was as a woodsman or on a state farm, second-class work. He didn't have a chance at a factory. Because he had a dark complexion, they assumed he wouldn't work. They wouldn't hire him. In 1956, Jura met a pretty 17-year-old at a dance. Her name was Antonia Chedrabova. Although she was not a Roma, she had lived a nomadic gypsy lifestyle. Her family made their living by traveling from one village to another, sharpening knives and fixing umbrellas. For Antonia and Jura, it was love at first sight. He was intelligent and handsome. Tall and handsome. What you showed him, he could immediately pick up. He could do everything for himself. Our mother married our father. He was a gypsy. My mother's family never let her forget that. It wasn't easy, and usually we children suffered the consequences. Every time our grandmother came to visit us, she always said to my mother, you were the only one to marry a gypsy. Why? Look at your sisters and how well they are doing. Why did you marry him? And that was every time she saw her. Other women kept their distance from me. As soon as my husband came, they stopped talking to me. And then I became a gypsy to them. Of course, that's how they saw us, a gypsy family. For example, our apartment. You could say it was one room and one very small kitchen. Seven people lived there, five kids and two of us, and they would not give us an apartment. My children had problems because they were Roma. They'd come home crying because the kids yelled at them. You Negro, you blackmouth, you gypsies. For many Roma, the education system under the communists became the worst kind of institutional discrimination. Special schools for slow learners were set up. 80% of the students were Roma. In this way, the child is handicapped for the rest of his life. He couldn't go on to a secondary level of education. This devastated the Roma community. And it goes from the communist era to the present. I started.